So we've been talking about man's relationship with God, how that God made man for fellowship. God made man to be one with him. And uh, God does things a certain way, which is totally different from anything that you know or have known. God has to teach you his ways. And so that's what God wants to do. He delights to teach man his ways because his ways are tried. They are true and they work and they produce fruit. Amen. And so we um, have went to the book of Genesis to to see things, how God intended it from the beginning, because the way God intended it from the beginning was the right way. It was the way of righteousness before there was sin. So you have to peer into what God intended from the beginning to know how to operate in this earth. Now, this earth has fallen under the sway of sin and God has given us a way back into that place of righteousness and even the path of righteousness and, and to learn the ways of righteousness. And it is through Jesus Christ and and we have the knowledge of the Lord once we are born again through the word of God and by the Holy Spirit, who is the Bible says our teacher. Amen. The Holy Spirit is God in this earth. So and he teaches us God's ways from the word of God. So it's, it's nothing um, that is outside of the truth. It's nothing that's outside of the word, but you don't know the word. Now, you may think you know the word, but you don't know the word until the Holy Spirit reveals the word unto you. God is a God who opens up secrets and mysteries of things that you did not know so that um, he would be manifest and the truth would be manifest to you so that you would choose truth and righteousness. Amen. So, you know, God um, um, showed man what he intended from the beginning. Amen. And uh, we know that man sinned. And so tonight I want to start in St. John chapter 3. And, and so Jesus is dealing with someone who is trying to gain understanding after the fall of the of the earth. And I think it's interesting how Jesus taught him and dealt with him from a standpoint of bringing him back to the ways of righteousness, the way that God intended from the beginning. It says in St. John chapter three, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher Come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So I want you to see this um, in the context of that the earth is fallen and also in the context that um, we are in the kingdom of God if we are if we are born again or from the context of the kingdom of God. Let me say it that way, that the, the gospel is a gospel of the, the kingdom uh, contrasting God's kingdom, which is a kingdom of light where you um, um, would live forever, where in a kingdom you stand with the king, you don't rebel against the king. And, and you enjoy the, 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 the strength, the, the prestige of the king and, and his, his kingdom and his name, you know, that if you're part of the, 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 the kingdom, uh, then you would enjoy the, the benefits that flow from the king, amen, to, to his subjects, okay? So, so Jesus says unto Nicodemus, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay. So Adam and Eve, God created Adam and Eve. They were innocent, free from sin. And so they were to be a part of God's kingdom. He left that option for them. Amen. To, to be with him, one with him, not rebelling against him and part of the kingdom. When Adam and Eve sinned, you know, I'm just summarizing and condensing so that you can understand then they became a part of darkness and they were separated from the Lord. And so um, now that that people would have to 
be born again. That's what Jesus afforded people to be born again into that righteous state so that they can see and participate in the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born again? So Nicodemus is referring to earthly things because that's the only context he has to compare to. Jesus is trying to tell him spiritual things and what God intended for man from the beginning, the, the state of man, how God intended for man to be. Alive unto God forever, living with God forever, enjoying the benefits of the, the kingdom of God, living forever with the Lord. So Nicodemus talked about physical birth. Then Jesus says, most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said unto you, you must be born again. Okay, so Jesus is saying that which is of the natural is natural and that which is of the spiritual is spiritual. That which is of the, 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 the realm of the natural is natural. That which is of the realm of the flesh is the flesh. But that which is of the realm of the spirit is the spirit. So he's talking about two different dimensions. And the dimension that God has called us to be is to be born again, born from above, born from heaven, born of the spirit. That is supposed to be the real us. Our heart is our spirit. Amen. And our heart was separated from God, but our heart or our spirit can be born again in the image of the Lord, the image of true righteousness and holiness, the Bible says. Amen. The, the image, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, and they that worship and serve the Lord, amen. That word worship many times means serve, and that word serve many times means worship, amen. The, the, the same word. So God is spirit, and they that worship him and serve him must worship him in, in spirit and in truth. So they have to choose the, the, the spirit in, over the flesh, that the, the, the spiritual, which is the kingdom of God, his kingdom, is not, it doesn't mean wispy air, it means a dimension. Amen. Which is associated with God, who he is. It's, it's more real than the natural because the natural, it came from the, the, the spirit realm first. You know, we call those things that be not to, as though they were. Amen. And that which lines up with the will of God, we're able to affect this natural realm by the higher order of the spirit realm. Amen. That, that God has given us the ability to rule over the natural by the spirit. And so when he told Adam to have dominion and authority, Adam would have to be aligned with God who is spirit and not to choose the natural over the spirit, but to rule over the natural by the spirit. Amen. So that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. Do not marvel that I said unto you, you must be born again. Then, he, then he, he, he shows this comparison and contrast. He said the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So it's everyone that is born of the spirit. So he is contrasting the natural with the spirit. He says it's kind of like your ability to grasp the wind. You, you see the wind. You know it's there. You see the effects of the wind, but you don't know where it's coming from. You, 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 you really don't have a handle on the wind because it is, it is different. Amen. And so that's the way that the spirit is. He's trying to, he's trying to tell Nicodemus, listen, you are, you're understanding natural things, but you're not understanding spiritual things. You call yourself a teacher. You know, but you're not understanding the beginnings, the genesis, where, where this all came from. People in this earth realm, they, they are born and they begin to be taught normally from a natural standpoint. 
They learn from the traditions of their fathers. Amen. And so those traditions many times are simply the traditions of man. And so they are, they are not connected to the reality, which is of the spirit. The reality of God. Amen. So you have to be born again to be introduced into that realm and receive the Holy Spirit so you can have spiritual sight in the realm where you're actually called to be. You're called to be a spirit man. Amen. You're called to be a son or a daughter of glory. Amen. You, you're, 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 your birthright is a spiritual one. Amen. And so if, in fact, it, it works like this, if you deny God and you deny the spirit, you resist the spirit and you embrace this earth realm over that which is of the Lord, you are rejecting your birthright. You're, you're being like Esau. You, you're rejecting your birthright and you are um, forfeiting your blessing. Amen. That if, if you choose that which is natural, amen, Jesus is seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If you say, and, and this is what the devil presented to Eve, if you say, I'm going to reject that portion of it, that spiritual portion, I just want this earth. I just want the things that are of this earth. I want the money. I want the gold. I want the clothes. I want the power. I want the prestige. I want the things that can be lusted after. I want the things that, that make me prideful. You are rebelling against God and you're rejecting your spiritual birthright. And the, the things of the earth, the Lord says, the, the lesson that the Lord is teaching, that those things are passing away. Jesus said it this way. If you pray or give or even fast to be seen by men, you have your reward. You have no spiritual reward. That reward dies with you in this earth realm. Just, just the, 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 the good feeling that, that people saw you and the pride that comes from that and getting credit for things. People do things to get credit to be seen in front of people. Amen. You lose your spiritual reward. Amen. And that reward that you actually got is emptiness. It is vanity. It is, it, it is folly. And it's attached to foolishness. And that's the ways of God that God wanted to teach. So he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So there is a fleshly or natural attached to this earth realm. There is a spiritual which is supposed to rule over the affairs of this earth realm, which is attached to God. Amen. And so we said that let's go back to Genesis. Any time that I teach, I'm, I'm going to um, um, refer to Genesis about ninety nine. Or 100% of the time, I'm going to refer back to Genesis because that was the beginning. Amen. When God made things, you have to see how he made it. Don't, don't, don't peer at how things were after the fall and look at that as the standard of how things are supposed to be. And don't look at the wisdom of man and, and receive that as the way that things are supposed to do. You have to look at God. You look, have to look at what he intended for righteousness. Amen. God's ways, God's precepts. Amen. And so let's look at, again at Genesis chapter 2, beginning with verse 4 and 5. It says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And I said that that. God made everything right, but man had a part to play. Man had a part that he was supposed to enter into if he was to continue 
in the oneness of God, being one with God and the fellowship of the Lord and continue in righteousness. Amen. So there is that which is righteous, that which is right, that man, because God loved man and God actually elevated man. He made man in his image and gave him his dominion and authority. Amen. As long as man used God's dominion and authority by being one with the Lord, attached to the Lord, man would be able to do all that God asked him and commanded him to do. But um, disconnected from God, man would not be able to do what God called him to do. So man's purpose was tied with God, even though God gave him liberty. The Bible says that where the spirit is Lord, there is liberty. And, and, and people have accused the word of God of trying to bind or restrict their liberty. But actually, God gives liberty with a caveat, with 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 um, 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 it, it is it is with a caveat. You have liberty, but the Bible says don't use that liberty for an occasion of the flesh. Paul says, all things are lawful for me, but everything is not expedient. Amen. All things are lawful, but I will not be um, um, brought under any. So you're not supposed to be brought under anything. The Bible says, whatever you yield your members to obey, you are a slave to whoever you, you, you yield your members to obey. Amen. And to that, whoever you, you give yourselves Two of that one you are overcome. Think about that. Whoever you give yourself to, of that one you are overcome. Amen. And so you're supposed to give yourself to God. You're supposed to fall upon the stone and be and be broken because God loves you. So He gives you liberty. He sets before you life and death, but He tells you um, that you need to choose life because there's consequences to choosing death. And that's what exactly what he did for man. And so what it is saying here is that man's part was to receive the reins of God, the, the R-A-I-N-S, and allow God to reign, amen, in this earth, amen, that the reins of God, it had not reigned in this earth yet because God had not found a man to till the soil. That means that that man, Adam, and those that would come after Adam were supposed to be in covenant with the Lord. God would provide the rain. Man would work the ground and bring forth righteous fruit in anything that tried to rebel. Man was supposed to subdue it. Anything that was not righteous, amen, Man was supposed to have dominion and authority over it and uh, subdue it and, 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 and to bring it back into divine order. So that was the covenant that God was offering man, that God would give man everything. All God, man, all God was asking man to do was to serve him, to worship him. So the covenant of reign is a covenant of worship. The Bible says God reigns righteousness. Amen. And so that man was to receive, trust God, it takes faith for God to do his part. Amen. To, to send the reins. Amen. So there would have to be a component of trusting the Lord that God would send the rain. Amen. God took care of the earth waiting for man to receive his reign. Amen. And if man would, it would show that um, he was willing to serve God and to worship God and not to be of rebellion, a rebellious spirit or rejecting God's word. You know, we, we taught over and over today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the rebellion. Amen. So it's not just the children of Israel that rebel. That's a precept today. That's entering in the day that the Lord has made. The Bible says the, the earth was finished in the heavens and, and the Lord rested on the seventh day. And that day is the day of the Lord. It is holy, it's sanctified. And so when we, we, we don't rebel, we don't go our own way. 
We don't try to produce our own work. Then we are by faith entering into God's rest, his day. We are saying in, in essence, that's why the Sabbath was so holy. We are saying in essence that we are submitted to God and that we are a worshiper of God. That's why worship is so important and that our whole life is unto service unto the Lord. You say, what is your work? Your work is to serve God. Whatever you do in word and deed, the Bible says it's supposed to be done all unto the Lord from a, a, a full heart, heartily. Amen. With all your heart, the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. Unto the Lord. Everything that you do is supposed to be in worship and service unto God. Amen. And so God had not found a man to till the land. So, so God had not sent the rain. Amen. That God placed two trees in the midst of the garden. The tree of life, which I told you last time, represented Jesus, amen, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, that if you would eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you would be rejecting God's word because God says don't eat. Secondly of all, you would be believing that um, only you had the right to choose what was good and what was evil. Only you had the right to decide what was good for you and what was evil for you. Amen. We, we know that today it is it is moral relative, re, moral relativity, relativism. Amen. Where there's no one right or one wrong that the person themselves choose what is right. Or what is wrong? And what has that gotten us? Perversion, corruption, wickedness, where one person's right is another person's wrong. And one person's right imposes on someone else and produces sin and wickedness. That was that was of the devil. The, the devil said to Eve, hath not God said, and the woman says, God says, don't eat. He says, if we eat, she says, if we eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we will surely die. The devil says, you will not surely die. He lies against the truth of God. He says, you'll be like gods, knowing both good and evil. So he's saying that you would have power, that knowing you deciding what is good and evil, he says, is power. And that is that, 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 that wickedness that's in the world today. That's the wickedness. That is, it is taught in college campuses, amen, that you choose what is right, what is wrong, whatever is right for you, whatever is good for you, amen. And so that is the wages of sin is, is death, amen. God was offering his ways. Even if man did not have the full picture, God was willing to teach man his ways, amen. God is, God is vast, God is limitless. Amen. You have to taste and see that the Lord is good, but he gives you good word. Amen. And good wisdom. Amen. And soundness. Amen. And so he had given man the opportunity. Man failed. Let's look at Deuteronomy. Let's look at the rain. Praise be to God. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Amen. And let's begin with verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 8. Therefore, you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess. So this is God speaking to the children um, of Israel. Amen. He had given them a promised land. Amen. The same land that he promised to Abraham, then Isaac and Jacob. Amen. And we know that um, they failed the test also. Most of them died in the wilderness after God delivered them out of Egypt, except for Joshua and Caleb and the younger generation. That older generation died in the wilderness because they, they did not learn God's ways. They did not obey God's ways. 
Amen. That's important. Amen. That Moses knew the ways of God, but the children of Israel only knew his works, his acts. Amen. So they were not intimate with the Lord. They never went up to the mountain of God. They never communed with God. And in fact, like so many people today, they said for Moses to speak to God and whatever Moses said, then they would hear and obey. But they would not. They did not even hear and obey Moses. Amen. And God had called man, created man for fellowship, for intimacy. He's trying to teach this way. Amen. And so man had had fallen away from that image, the farther that they got away from that, that image that God created, that image of righteousness, which was personified in the tree of life, personified in Christ. Amen. The son of righteousness. Amen. Personified in that in the word of God. As God would give it them the word by his voice. He always says, if you would hearken to the voice of the Lord, that's intimacy. Amen. And he says, therefore, if you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong and go into the and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers. To them as their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world where they were in bondage. They were in captivity. They were under the yoke. He says, now the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come. Where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. So he says, it's not like the land of Egypt where you were permitted to have like a little piece of land for a vegetable garden that you could control. You could irrigate it. You could bring the water. And you, you were in charge and you would control it. He says, the land that I'm taking you is not like the world, how you were in the world. I want you to get this. Egypt is a type of the world. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys which drinks in water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning of the year until the very end of the year. So this is what God intended from the beginning. That to give rains. That the, the land that God was given, he says, you cannot control it yourself. You would have to trust me. I would take care of the land. This land is so big, you know, you would not be even able to walk the full breadth and length of it. Amen. You would have to trust me for the rain. Amen. That land would drink in the rain. You would have to trust me to, to care for it. And, and think about it. The, the land, uh, when, when they had sent despise the spy of the land, the, the land truly was a land flowing with milk and honey and abundance and, 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 and fullness. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness. The, the, the fruit was great, amen, larger than anything that they had ever seen before. The, the grapes, it took two men with, with a pole one on one side, one on the other, to carry even a bunch of grapes, amen. The fruit of the land was that rich. and plenty. Only God could take care of that. And so this is what God intended for Adam and Eve. He says, the covenant of rain. You're going to have to trust me. I'm looking for someone who will serve me. All God was asking that, that, the, that Adam and Eve would serve him and he would bless them. Amen. The blessing. The Bible says God blessed them and told them to have dominion and authority and to be fruitful and to multiply. And so God, all God is wants is to, that for mankind to serve him, to worship him and to honor him. The Bible says under the Lord with your substance, with the first fruit of your increase. What are you? What is the word saying? It's saying all God wants you to do is acknowledge that what you have came from him. Amen. He will bless it if you will honor him with it. 
Amen. He will make sure that it abounds and flourishes. Amen. To, to be more and more and more. So this is the covenant of the rain where you, you can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it. You have to cease from your own labors. It's not like Egypt, which was a type of the world. By your own efforts, you had something, a little garden that you were proud of. Amen. Little vegetables that you were proud of. Amen. You did it. <laughs> Amen. But the land, the promised land, was a vast land of mountains and valleys and hills and waters and streams and rivers and water spouts. Amen. A vast land that only God could do. But the fruitfulness of it was unmatched when you let God do it. Your part was just to enter into that covenant of rain. Says, Lord, I trust you for the rain and I will honor you, Lord God, with your blessings. What you bless me with, I will worship you and I will and I will serve you. Amen. And so what's the opposite? Like I said, the knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, where you say, I'm in charge. I do what I want to do when I want to do it. I choose what's right. You don't tell me. I'm offended you try to tell me what's right. Try to tell me how to dress. You try to tell me that my drinking is, is wrong. I say it's right. And, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm right. You know, I wear what I want to wear. As far as I'm concerned, I'm right. Amen. And so that's what that meant, that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Where people would say, I'm going to decide. And it is, God says, that produces death. In the day that you eat, you shall surely die. You need the tree of life. You need to be born again. You need to be born from above. Amen. It says that God's kingdom has to come in this earth realm. Amen. Heaven is already operating, man. Heaven is humming. Heaven is buzzing, man. Heaven is hitting on all cylinders of righteousness. It's right. Amen. It's light. And there is worship and service unto God. Amen. If you want to know what praise looks like, you enter in, look into heaven, peer into the heavenly realm. Amen. You know we can connect to that in the spirit realm. The Bible says that we are not uh, gathered to a mountain Amen. That's, that has smoke and shaking and, and, and fire. But we are gathered to Mount Zion with an innumerable company of angels. Amen. We are um, 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 the, the church of Zion. Amen. The church is called Mount Zion. God's holy hill is called Mount Zion. And we are able to be connected when we are in the presence of the Lord. We are connected with the Lord when we are with one accord, lifting one voice unto God in praise, one voice unto God in worship. We can be gathered at Mount Zion. Amen. And so the, the kingdom has to come in this earth realm. Man has to allow Jesus to be Lord and to learn God's ways and then move in those ways, operate in those ways, demonstrate that those ways are right. Amen. We have to learn that the ways of the earth are wrong and we have to disconnect from those ways and learn the ways of God. Amen. And so when God's kingdom comes, it removes the, the boasting that comes with the natural realm. In this natural realm, anything that is worked, anything that is done produces boasting because people said that they did it. Amen. But when the kingdom of God comes, it removes boasting because you would give honor and glory to God. When God changes a natural circumstance, amen, when, if God gives you a promotion on your job, you give glory to God, not to yourself with your, with your brain power, your intellect and your education and your wisdom. You give, if you're connected to the kingdom of God, you will give God the glory, amen you would be operating in righteousness. When God made everything righteous and right, one definition of that, the thing that is created and made by God in righteousness would have glory, would give the glory back to God. The glory on it would be from the Lord. The beauty, the shine, the, 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 the functionality, the fruitfulness would be of the Lord. And that thing would give the glory back 
to God. That's what true righteousness and holiness is. Amen. In the kingdom of God, the glory of a thing is released by the honor of Jesus. Amen. So we give glory to God. We honor Jesus, which pleases the Father. If you honor Jesus, then God will honor you. That's how it works in the kingdom of God. Jesus is the, the center of the kingdom. Amen. He, he is the focal point of honor. Amen. He is one with the Father. The God is not threatened at all to that Jesus is honored and glorified because when Jesus is honored, God is honored. He says, that's how you show you're honoring me by honoring Jesus. That's how you show you are obeying me, says the Father, when you obey Jesus. Amen. The reins, I want to talk a little bit more about the reins. Amen. God intended rain to be a sign of covenant that man was one with him. Amen. That man had agreed to, to let God be God. Amen. To release the reins. Amen. And so uh, Adam and Eve, they rebelled against God. So the earth was fallen. And so God would still try to deal with man, and he still looked for fruit, righteous fruit, righteous seed. Amen. And so we know the story Cain and Abel. Cain was of the wicked one. But Abel, the Bible says he was righteous. And that the Bible actually says that he was a prophet. The Bible says in Luke about chapter 11, verse 49, somewhere around there, that Abel was, was a prophet. Amen. In other words, he was a spokesperson for the kingdom of God. That's what a prophet is. A spokesperson for God. Amen. So it, it's a, when you know that, there's a little, that's a little bit more information that, that, that helps you to understand why Cain killed Abel. Amen. So Abel's, um, was, was a righteous man, a righteous prophet, which was a spokesperson for God and a spokesperson for God's kingdom. But the Bible says Cain was of the wicked one. Amen. And so that, let me, let me just explain. A person that is righteous, that is of the kingdom, is a person that is loyal to God and loyal to the kingdom. So that person would give righteous fruit back to God. Remember, God is looking for righteous fruit. And so the Bible says that Abel's gifts testified that he was righteous. In other words, that Abel was serving God. What we know about the rain. Abel was serving God. He was worshiping God. He was a server of God, a worshiper of God, because he gave God righteous fruit. He gave God the firstling. He, 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 was, um, he took care of animals, the, the flock. He gave God the firstling of the, of the flock and the fat of it. He gave God the best. He acknowledged that it came from God. Not so with Cain. The Bible says that Cain gave God some, some of his, his fruit. <laughs> Amen. But the, the fruit that Cain gave did not testify that he was righteous. Remember what righteousness is. That Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. So we, we can say that Abel was a believer of God. He had faith in God. Cain did not. The Bible says he was of the wicked one, trusting in himself. If you're of the wicked one and you receive what the devil told Eve, trusting yourself and that your righteousness is of yourself and, and being disconnected from God. Amen. And so Cain killed Abel. Amen. Because Abel's Gifts testified that he was righteous, but actually when a person is is righteous, it puts heat. The Bible says you are light and it puts heat on the person that is it is unrighteous. That's why that person does not look. They, they those many of those people will not come to the light and it's a it is a condemnation against them. Amen. And so Cain killed Abel. Amen. And so. When we get to the time of the days of Noah, amen, 
The, the Holy Spirit was striving, trying to strive with man, but the whole earth was wicked and full of violence, the Bible says. Now, remember, it still had not rained. Amen. So the earth was full of violence and wickedness, and man's imaginations were wickedness at all times. Amen. They, they had actually been polluted. That seed had been polluted with that demonic seed. And so they had lost the ability to imagine anything good. Their thoughts were, their imaginations were wickedness at all times. Except, the Bible says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And so God said to prepare. He told Noah to prepare an ark, a boat. And he, and he gave the dimensions from heaven. And, and Noah worked 100 years on that ark. Amen. And the Bible says he was what? A preacher of righteousness. God never leaves himself. The Bible says that God does not leave himself without a witness and that he gives rain in its season. Amen. And so Noah was a preacher of righteousness. All the time that he was building, that hundred years, he was preaching righteousness. The Bible also says Enoch was in that time prophesying against that wickedness which was in his earth. Amen. Okay. And so God says, it's going to rain. They've never seen rain. But this time, the rain would be a witness that they refused God. That they refuse to serve God. They, re, they refuse to be one with the Lord. They, are, they refuse his ways. Amen. And so the very thing which was supposed to be blessing is now is going to be judgment. Amen. That man had not received the, 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 the grace of God, the graciousness of the, the, the reigns of God. Now God says it's going to rain. Amen. And that, that rain will be a witness against them. Praise be to God. And so you know what happened? That Noah finished the ark and him and his family, it was eight of them in all. And even the ark represented Jesus being saved by water. Amen. Holy Ghost. And so it began to rain. Amen. And the rain that was supposed to have been the, 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 the epitome, the picture, the, the, the image of life, a life source. Amen. All, all life is held together by the rains. Now is a witness and a judgment against them and destroyed the whole earth. The Bible says all flesh had corrupted itself. So everything was polluted and had to be started over again. Amen. And so the, all mankind and the animals have been polluted also. And, and, of that, and, and even that was by the, 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 the demonic. Amen. The people and the animals were all destroyed by the rain. Amen. Because they refused to enter into covenant with the Lord. What the first thing that God did after the rains, he made a covenant with Noah. Amen. He says, it's not going to rain anymore. Amen. But I put my rainbow in the sky after the rain. <laughs> Amen. It's ay, 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 ay. So, cras de ramo ferdos y dandros, wimbres y corma ramos y darabosa, ramo caruba shawa. Day, 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 day. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the day. <laughs> Man. The day of the Lord, and I'm also talking about Robo Shadaba, the shower of righteousness. God calls his rains, Holy Ghost, to fall on the just and the unjust. That that man would become wet with the rains of God. In other words, to be awakened, by the rains of God, Holy Ghost, the rains of righteousness are coming upon this earth, amen. Not a rain of destruction, but a rain to bring people into the consciousness of God, to be conscious, to be awakened, to be alert, to, to leave out of their own ways. 
and to receive the ways of God, to recognize that goodness is falling. Goodness is falling. Amen. So, in appreciation, amen, that it is not the, the fullness of destruction or the, the fullness of judgment, but the fullness of blessing. Amen. God is causing his reign. Amen. The Bible says that the, the man of God said to his servant, what, what do you see? He says, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. And so the prophet said, get ready for the abundance of rain. Amen. That the drought was over. Jesus says, come unto me all who thirst. Amen. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters from the rains of righteousness and by the, the, the movements of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. So God is doing a thing in this earth. And Robo Shadarabo, it is so different that it will awaken. Amen. Many people that were in asleep, it will shock. Amen. So that you can be awakened to the day, the day, the day. That the Lord hath made the day of the Lord. Amen. So there is time to enter in. Holy Ghost. There was a time where if anyone wanted to, they could have entered into the ark. But there came a time when that time was over with. Amen. So, so we are in a season, a time of entering in. We are in a time of awakening. Hey, Amen. That awakening is actually the hand of God showing forth the goodness of God by the reins of righteousness. Amen. And it's of necessity. Amen. If there be reins, Holy Ghost, there, there, there must be thunder. Holy Ghost, and there, there must be lightning. Which which are like signs and wonders, which point to the mountain of God. People have been doing things a certain way. Amen. And God is awakening people, arresting people. It, it shall be a stark time, a time of quick turnaround. Quick changes, amen, facilitated by the reins of God and things will begin to bloom and blossom and to be fruitful, amen. Even the desert places will begin to bloom. That which is dry and parched, amen, will begin to bloom. What is God doing? He is calling those to, to cease from being in rebellion against him, and to, and to acknowledge by the reins that God is good. Amen. It shall be a time of great witness. Amen. And the power to witness. Jesus says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be witnesses. In this season and this time, the ability to witness shall be increased. I want you to understand. Holy Ghost, that by the power of the Holy Ghost, your witness will be more effective because your witness will be with signs and wonders and miracles and healings. Holy Ghost, not just word, but in signs for those who are connected to God and will receive. Amen. That, that, the condemnation is for those who will not receive. Amen. That God has always looked for someone to receive what he has already prepared. And this has been in the making for a long time. God has prepared this time and he has prepared the rains, even storehouses of rains. Amen. Of his, of his goodness. Holy Ghost. Storehouses. <laughs> Amen. Which will, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost, which will mm, release... <laughs> Mass healings and deliverances. Holy Ghost. I, it's, it's going to be released. I'm telling I feel it now. It's being released. It's being released. Amen. You don't have to strain. God says they are healed. I'm speaking to someone now. You are healed. It's released by the Lord. 
Holy Ghost. Signs, wonders, and miracles. I, I, I speak as the, the apostle of God and as the prophet of God. I am releasing into this earth realm the reins of God. Holy Ghost. The goodness of God. Holy Ghost. By, by this prophetic word. Holy Ghost. I, I, I see it opened unto you. And I thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen.